Just slide by. This is, uh, let me see, I believe the 10555 anti-chatter oil pump. The high dollar pump, it had come welded with the pickup on it, or it come with, excuse me, it come with this bolted to the end of the pickup for that uh, pan. And I went in there and welded this up anyway. Now, let me explain this to you. And I can't tell you enough, you do not trust that damn bracket to hold this pickup. If you do, you will lose your motor. I've seen too many of them. They, they break, they snap. You just can't believe the amount of force that's on this thing. So I went in there, took a brass, welded it in to the piece, did a little bit of extra heavy welding in there, and got the bolts. But that's just part of the trick. I fully blueprint the pump. I take it to pieces, and uh, right now I've actually got, I use real fine emery paper in this stage, and um, or a, some kind of small cross buff, and I just go in there and get everything smooth to the touch, make sure there's no burrs. Um, one of the things I pay close attention to and I learned this from my old friend David Bizarre was to take these pumps and spend a little time, I, I mean, you know, a couple of hours, this is your motor, and go over these pump gears and touch them and kind of smooth the edges of them. Actually, there's also a file thing you can do to them, but for the most part, these new black box pumps, they've done an excellent job. It is an entirely different pump. A lot better design and the oil cavities, the, 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 the chatter grooves and everything else, but still leaves a lot to be desired. Don't just drop the damn things in and put it. it just, you just don't do it. Quality control, remember guys. So I take, and after spending a few hours, I go in here smoothing that, uh, take my emery paper and of course smooth the shaft. That's just that part. The next part's the trick. I port the pump. I go in here, take all the casting flash out, my die grinder, and blend it. Radius these edges. Get in here where the uh, chatter grooves are in the sides. Polish them. Spend my time um, getting where there's no rough edges where the pump goes along inside. You don't want any edges. But I actually go in here with my finger tool and my porting tool, as you can see, and I port this out, open that up, knock these sharp edges down, and it is really bad inside this hole. If you could look in there, it, it's real rough. It's not an even edge. I go in there, port it, blend it, stone it, and polish it. Port it, blend it, polish it here. Pour it, blend it really good here. Sharp edges, horrible casting flash right here. Blend it, polish it. I mean, it's just uh, 200 grit smooth to the touch. All the transition, the hole opened up. Now for the real trick. You take your bottom base plate, undo this screw, and take your spring out, which houses your little control piece and your spring. Okay, and there is a big tall, oops, well that was an idiot thing, excuse my bald head. There was a big tall, uh, where this tube and the uh, oil uh, path comes all the way to the edge, it was a big tall, like a short turn radius on the head. I looked at that and I was like, what the hell is going on? So I go in there. I use a ball, because that's about all you can use, and take the ball and an egg and just pull that back. Knock them edges, pull that back. Now you can take your finger, and there is no sharpness. Look how far I can get my pinky finger up in there. I was real good at that in my younger years, getting my pinky finger up in them tight holes. But uh, I go in here, and you can feel it like a short turn on a head. I open all this up a little bit. I don't go outside bigger than this dimension. Uh, anytime that you can take 
when it's going in a straight line, take all that sharpness out, make it roll in a short term. What have we done? Made it easier for the oil to turn and no aeration. No air mixed with it. Remember, that's one of the main reasons of anti-chatter pump. No aeration. We don't want air bubbles. And that chatter in the pump can cause that along with it. It does something to the distributor too, some type of electronic thing. Um, some kind of ion or something pulsing in the top when it goes around the connections. But this part I do know, and if you do these things, you port the pump, you blend the, the passage holes, polish them out. This mainly going in here, chopping that, pulling it back, radiusing it, polishing it. You just made a tremendous difference on when it sucks the oil from the bottom, brings it in, it keeps it from aerating. Then you got the anti chatters in there keeping it from aerating. You're getting pure oil delivered to them mains. I also go in there. And uh, with this little deal, or a sand roll too, and I polish this really good so that my uh, little device there can come in and out, which uh, this is, I believe, is what lets your oil in and out and sets pressure in the spring. This pump is the high volume. You notice how big that tube diameter is? I believe that's uh, three quarters. And the reason I went that big on that tube is because, remember, we... Uh, Drill the block on the lifter side, straightened out the lifter bores where it's got a straight oil path and an enlarge the top and then drill the mains. All that work, we got to have a lot of volume and a lot of pump to be able to feed where I open that oil system up for this motor. Uh, probably didn't need that. I did it because the guy uh, was, was once a really good friend years ago and... Um, I wanted to help him out on this and you know to give him a good motor and I wanted to show y'all how to drill it but remember when you go opening up them lifter bores and opening the mains for oiling you gotta have enough oil to, to pick it up and this is an excellent pump for the money but you just don't drop it in um, I'll get more into this later on when we do another motor I'll spend a whole session and I'll a session and I'll show you how I blend it, but I think y'all pretty much got what I'm talking about. Now, what I'll do in a minute is um, when I get it all washed up and cleaned, I'm gonna show you what I used to put oil in there. We used to use Vaseline, the old drag racers years ago. I just go in there mainly and I I pack it full of the cleavite lube, the bearing assembly lube. Pack it full, and then I use red Loctite on the four bolts, pull it in, get it good and tight, man, she's ready to drop. Believe me, the difference in your bearing life by porting this, polishing it, and doing what I'm showing you makes all the difference in the world. That's going to make good with our big badass Moroso pan and our oiling system. This motor should live a, two lifetimes. Hey, I've already put the spring in and primed it. Uh, maybe I should have showed you that, but basically I took a touch of oil put in the pipe, put some of my lube in that hole, and then on the spring hole, I shot this lubricant in there for the slide for the critical first few minutes of startup. Now on the body, I just take my bearing lube. Like I said, old timers like us, we used to use, believe it or not, Vaseline. Uh, it, it's an it's a air cavitation thing. To get it sucking and drawing up in there, uh, is really a lot of it, but this stuff here, I've, I've been using this for years since it came out, and man, I've had great success on these areas. And uh, basically, I just take it and put it all on the shaft. Take your screwdriver, go around it, and just kind of paint it. I get it in the cavities. Okay and uh, put just a touch on this particular gear itself and then what I do is I roll around like that okay and then slide her in okay and then of course I pretty much do the same thing on this one I make sure that it's got plenty of lube right there in the hole 
Then go, as Scotty from Star Trek says, up your shaft. That was um, Star Trek 3, The Search for Spot. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, then I come across this and hit that the same way. Make sure that I got that pump cavity wall covered just like I did the other one. I'm very generous with this stuff because I just, I don't want nothing, no metal to metal contact, nowhere on it and doing it like this, it makes me happy. And then I slide the gear set in there and boom. Now once I got to that point right there, the next thing I do, I go in here on the back side and I put a lot in the cavity. I go along the top of it like that and get a good feel and now I'm ready to put the plate. And the only thing I do on that deal, I clean it off, I put red Loctite on all of the bolts and get a good pull on it <clears throat> so that I know I'm not going to ever have a pump problem. And I can't tell you enough how this needs to be done. <coughs> I found several errors, rough castings, uh, very sharp uh, edges on the gear set. It's, it's a blueprinting process and I mean this is the heart of your motor, buddy. You better get this one right. You don't. It's just like uh, your heart starts pumping no blood. Same situation. All right. 